please be advised of the disclaimers. All right, let's get started. Welcome to the Pinnacle Trading webinar. Today is October 30th uh, at 8.15 p.m. Uh, so today we'll go over basically how to get started investing in the stock market. So this will be a little bit basic. You guys might know all of these um, terms or in, whether you're new to the market or you know maybe more of an advanced trader, this might still apply to you. You might learn a few things, uh, but if you are new, this will uh, be good catch up or a good eye-opening session. So let's jump into it. So uh, just before we get into anything, just have to disclose uh, the disclaimers that we have. They can be found on the website on pinnaclotrading.us slash terms, and you can find everything there for today's video. Um, and also just about Pinnacle Trading, our ecosystem was built with all types of traders to provide you with the right alerts and education to cover you from all angles. And Pinnacle Trading was founded by me to make trading and investing simple for everyone. And our mission is to provide with live market trade ideas, with uh, you know, but there are affiliates and our admins and our traders that we have in the chat room along with me. And we also will teach you step-by-step step to get started and also display consistent methodology. So we'll update you on the stock market, any news and our stock picks and investments, uh, et cetera, so that you can trade and be in the stock market without any intimidation. So today's session, how to get started in the stock market itself. So we'll focus on the investing side today, but it can also apply to trading itself, some of the things that I'll teach you in here. So, you know, we have the market correction that's going on right now. Uh, if we take a quick look at the market, uh, we can see that the sell-off has kind of started over here. And I did go over this on my YouTube channel in the videos from uh, yesterday and once from last week where we're kind of looking for a sell-off as markets uh, we sell the RSI over 70 and we also saw that markets were kind of overbought and pretty extended up and it's a very similar pattern to when we look at in back in March of this year February into March we saw the market drop we saw the double top test high and then we saw a sell-off so same thing uh, looking for the same pattern over here and we're kind of seeing that over kind of uh, take place right now kind of started right here so let's see if it breaks 200 SMA of course um, we'll, if you watched yesterday's video I talked more about this on there but just as a quick overview of the one-year chart on SP 500 uh, SPY is the ticker for that all right let's jump back into here so the first step is going to be education uh, many people out there uh, will tell you how to get started it's going to be uh, you know put some money in put some money into an account start buying this start buying that and that's because they haven't started the right way um, you know I've been told the same thing but first thing is going to be education just like you're if you're going into a degree like in a step um, in college or whether it's high school or whether any training or certification you want to have the education because if you don't know what you're doing that can lead to many big mistakes and also just a lot of confusion and putting education onto later uh, can really lead to those type of mistakes that you don't want to make especially with your money and your future and financial man management etc i'm not a broker in any way or a financial advisor but these are just my suggestions that i've learned uh, over the years of my trading and investing career so what i suggest is going to be setting an education time i did go over this in my last webinar so it's going to be a little bit similar for these steps on this slide uh, first step is going to be education time you want to set yourself about six to twelve months of education but always want to be learning because markets are always changing it's not a one thing it's not a one single chart up and down it's changing every every single day and every year all the time every second based on the news so anything can happen at any time so we always want to be learning based off of that and then i would say demo trading or demo account like a paper account it's a fake account uh, with fake money so you want to do that for about three to six months that's what i suggest if you're that's more uh on trading based but if you're looking more for investing and just want to learn the platform what buttons to push buy sell you're not going to be trading too much uh, for long term it's mostly going to be buying uh rebalancing your portfolio and selling uh at certain time taking some profit or changing to a different funds so it won't apply too much for trading itself but uh, investing at least it's going to be more simple so you want to aim to just learn the platform, kind of what buttons to push, get familiarized uh, with the order types, with the market orders, limits, and stop losses. And then you want to go live. So that's where we get funded, put in money into the account, and trade for three months 
Um, you know, if you're just investing, I would say a couple weeks to a month should be enough just to get familiarized with the platform itself. Because trading, that's going to be more of looking at the order types, what stocks to trade, learning more of the charting and all of that. Investing is going to be pretty, pretty uh, simple. So we want to focus on being consistent uh, with, over time and with the money. So that's where we ask the question at the end. You know, once you understand, do you are you comfortable? Are you confident? Uh, do you want to switch back to demo? Kind of give it an, another shot, or are you confident to go live and start trading with real money? So that's what filter up is out the uneducated versus the dedicated traders and investors. So look at how, how I said undedicated, uh, which is going to be uneducated traders because they're going to go live, just jump in. Uh, people will tell them, hey, buy this stock, hey, buy Tesla here, hey, buy Apple right here. But they don't know what's going on with it because they could be buying at all time high and they could be buying right before a market crash or right before uh, it drops or, you know, maybe even other way around. and kind of quote get lucky uh, because they don't know what they're doing and then they make some money and get really confident put it back into another stock and say hey i made money and i'm going to do this again and kind of you know lose what they did or even lose uh, more than they had so education is very very important and i do offer the course because i put everything in there that i've learned trading investing my strategies how to uh, properly use risk management money management uh, that's for stocks option, options and we also put futures uh, recently in there as well and also includes lifetime access so the second step is going to be choosing a brokerage itself so you might have already done this if you're familiar with trading in the stock market but if you're a little bit newer you know the first step uh, the second step is going to be choosing the brokerage after you have the education down so you might have chosen uh, one there itself uh, one I recommend is going to be TD Ameritrade because it has both paper trading, uh, which is what I talk about in this one, kind of the demo trading, and it also has a live trading itself. So we want to look at uh, commissions and fees. Uh, there's a big difference with that. So commissions are going to be what you pay for the stock just for the trade itself, and the fees are going to be associated with uh, the trade itself. So an example is that it's going to be, uh, let's say I take an Apple trade. So I buy 10 shares of Apple, commission might be a dollar per trade. So if I'm buying 10, it's gonna be 10 bucks just to enter. And same thing for exiting, same thing for selling if I'm taking profit. The fees are gonna be, uh, they're usually in small font. Uh, they're usually, you have to ask them or it's kind of uh, not really put out there along with the commissions. So with the fees, it's gonna be, they might charge five cents per every hundred shares or each share is every extra five cents and the fees might be associated with along with the commissions itself so you want to look in depth and see what your broker is actually charging you and it usually is different for how much money you have in the account basically so there's different tiers and td ameritrade uh, makes it pretty simple so that's why i recommend them uh, and also just trust and reliability so if you know, I, there's brokers that offer free, uh, no commissions, no fees, nothing like that for buying stocks, options, etc. But you really want to see or how long they've been around, uh, their heritage, how reliable they are. You know, there's some brokerages I'm not going to name, but they have a lot of outages. Sometimes during heavy market trading hours, or we see big movements in the market, a lot of volume volatility they go out basically it means that they're not sustaining themselves and you can't trade you can't put your orders in and that can really cost you uh, not just your time but also money uh, which is very important in this case and also it's simplicity so some people might like just a simple app uh, TD Ameritrade has the investing app they have the thinkorswim which is more advanced uh, that's where we have more charting etc they have a regular app which is Based uh, to be simple, uh, mainly for investors because you're basically just buying and selling stocks. Uh, and then it's going to be education. So a lot of these brokers, uh, they just have the trading. They also offer education. So they do live sessions like me, what I'm doing right now to kind of educate you on market or order types or whatever it is. And not all of them uh, offer that. And then we will also want to look for tools and research. Uh, they have a good uh, research tab on there. They have data analysis and a lot of this data is free on TD Ameritrade. So that's why I recommend them. They have level two data for trading. Uh, they have time and sales for trading for free and a lot of the market news, uh, live data. A lot of those 
you know, a brokerage just charge maybe $50, $100 a month just for that. But TD Ameritrade has all that for free and they don't have a minimum account balance, I believe, to, to get that data. And also um, data options itself. So if you want more market research, uh, they do have some paid ones. So if you want, uh, just check that out with the brokerage that you're choosing. And also, uh, once we do choose a brokerage, we want to choose an account, an individual one where it is taxed um, based on your tax bracket, uh, based on what you buy and sell uh, short term, long term, etc. And you can look that up uh, based on your tax bracket and all of that on Google and Roth IRA or traditional IRA. There's a big difference on that one. Now you can look that up online as well. And there's many other accounts. Like if you're younger than 18, you can get a custodial account. So if you want to get started, of course, sooner the better. Uh, you can also have your parents kind of approve an account for you, a custodial account. And then, so lastly, I recommend TD Ameritrade for this, but you're welcome to choose whichever one. Uh, kind of read through all these uh, bullet points that I posted on this slide and kind of look through what your broker offers and then go ahead and choose it from there. So the first, no, main step again, recapping is going to be education and then we want to choose a brokerage from there. And then third step is going to be picking investments. This is the main part. So it's best to just keep it simple when investing. Sometimes boring is better because it's long term. We're kind of just sitting on our hands, watching things grow over time, uh, letting money do the work for us rather than the other way around. So what I recommend is going to be uh, there's a lot of different types out there in the market. So there's individual stocks, Apple, Google, uh, Visa, whatever it is, uh, individual stocks itself, individual companies. And then there's ETFs, exchange traded funds. So SPHD is one of them, uh, VTI is one of them, IWM. Uh, those contain of individual stocks picked by that ETF or the, tr the fund manager, and they're all put into one. So that's low cost investment and it's also diversified. So you wanna check, go through the list, look at each stock on there, or at least the top 10 or the top holdings, and then look at what they're in. So it can be in utilities, it can be in construction, it can be in uh, banking, it can be technology, whatever it is. So you wanna kind of diversify, but also you don't wanna be undiversified. So you wanna be in the middle, in the sweet spot over there. And that's, that comes with over time. And also, you know, like, of course, we talk about all of that in there. So that will help you pick out funds. And also there's mutual funds as well. And there's many other types uh, like fixed income, a lot of those, but I mainly focus on stocks and ETFs. So here's what I suggest. So if you don't know what you're doing, if you wanna keep it simple, which I really recommend, I'd say few individual solid long-term stocks. So solid long-term stocks. So these are ones that are companies that you know of or you have good analysis on them you've done your research and you're looking at their balance sheets you're looking at their earnings you're looking at their reports all of that so just a few so that's two to three and then few etfs as well so just two to three so combined should be no more than four to six of total and then few etfs that are appreciating that means the price is continuously going up over long term uh, with solid dividend growth though. So that means the dividend that they pay every month or quarter is also increasing over time. So we, with ETFs, a lot of them out there can be up and down. They might be paying a high dividend, vice versa. They might be paying a low dividend, but they have big appreciation. So we want to look for kind of a sweet spot, but also, you know, one or the other, whichever you're comfortable with. But what I recommend is one that's continuously growing long-term, like an individual stock is and also with solid dividend growth. So what that allows us to do is we get good growth over long term when market is good, and we also get dividends uh, when markets are bad. So it kind of covers us from all angles and all types of markets. And then the three main index funds are gonna be SPY, QQQ, uh, DIA. So uh, NASDAQ, Dow Jones, and S&P 500, those are the big three. Those three themselves, if you don't know what to buy, uh, don't know which stock to buy, what ETF to buy, those three themselves will pretty much cover almost entire, almost 100% of the market. And those three are pretty much good enough. You, all you have to do is just keep buying them for over long term. And if you don't know what, what to put your money in, 
those three will be simply enough. And I made a video on that. If you don't know what you put some money in, kind of, that's pretty much a uh, good, uh, just buy and go. So the fourth step is gonna be setting a budget. So now that we have a portfolio, we have a brokerage, uh, we have the education down, which is important. We wanna, we wanna have the portfolio created uh, and we just simply set a budget for the account. So long-term investment, where that means we're adding money to the account, that's way, that way it grows exponentially along with the stock appreciation or ETF appreciation and the dividends that we get. So example of that is gonna be adding $50 a week uh, which is pretty much the same thing as $200 a month, uh, but the smaller number kind of doesn't seem so big. Uh, so when someone says, hey, I'm gonna add uh, $200 a month, or hey, I'm gonna set a goal of $200 a month, uh, it's kind of easier to say $50 a week because smaller number, uh, just mindset-wise, have human minds work, uh, is gonna be easier. It seems like less amount of money, even though it's the same, because four weeks is about $200 a month, kind of $50 a week if you can put that away aside every week, uh, might be easier for some people. So we, you can also set this recurring deposit. You can do a daily deposit, you can do a weekly, monthly, quarterly, maybe even a yearly. And that's a lot of the brokerages offer that. So if that works for you, if you wanna keep it kind of automated like a robot, uh, just like a system every month so that you don't fall back on it, uh, you can have that set up and just check which one you have. Uh, like the ones that I said before, IRA, traditional IRA, individual account, and they have different limits and regulations for each one. So you want to check the taxes on each one uh, and just the rules on each one. And the last step is going to be waiting. So this is where we have our education, our brokerage, we have the funds in there and we're just waiting for the money to grow, kind of the markets to play along and just for time to go on. So this is this can be the easiest part because you're just watching and waiting and maybe you're trading on the side just just for fun or uh, just to make some side income or you're investing in other things other than the market but this can also be some of the hardest part for some people because they check it every single day or they check it every single week i recommend if you're investing for long term just check whenever you're adding the money so if you're having a weekly deposit just check once then uh, if you're checking if you're putting money in every month just check then uh, and that's a good uh, way to go about it don't check every single day unless markets are really changing uh, that's times where you want to check the least so when markets are just going up steadily to, you might want to check a little bit more often just so that you don't make any uh, hasty decisions so investing can be boring because it's focused on long-term growth but that's a good thing and just let the money work for you not the other way around and rebalance portfolio as needed so that we can have the allocation properly uh, where we talked about the investments so when we have let's say spy grows 15 percent qqq grows five percent dia grows eight uh, percent we want to rebalance it so it's they kind of uh, when one grows a little bit more, we want to sell a little bit of that, move it into the other one so they're growing equally in the account. So that's what rebalancing is. So we can kind of see why staying in cash is not so great because money is deflating over time, about two to three percent a year, uh, or in, sorry, inflation over time, two to three percent a year. And that's bad because money goes down, the value of it goes down. And even if you have the worst timing in the market, even if you buy at the all time highs and you keep buying, uh, you're still better off staying in cash and dollar cost averaging, which is what I recommend. Uh, that means you're putting away mon money every month, just like I said, right here, every week, every month, and you're just buying regardless of the price fluctuations. Uh, that's still a lot better off than staying in cash. And you can see if you're investing immediately, like as soon as you get your paycheck, you're putting it in the market and you're in buying it, investing immediately. Or if you have perfect timing, which is kind of in a perfect world where you're buying at the lowest point and you're selling at the highest point uh, and keep repeating or you keep buying at the lowest point continuously. Uh, it's not so much different than uh, dollar cost averaging. Might be a little bit more, but it's huge difference from staying in cash. So last thing, uh, the first thing, which is talked about education uh, is going to be where we come back to. So I offer a course, so it will cut your learning curve, give you all the tools you need to become an educated trader and investor in the stock market. So when we talk about uh, where we uh, pick investments, uh, things like that, how to look at 
uh, balance sheets, how to look at earnings, how to read the market, uh, how to do charting, and also picking out uh, different stocks. Uh, the course does cover that in the investment section and also money management section. And this will allow you to gain the knowledge to become a confident trader and investor. Uh, why would you want to go into something blindly, lose money, and then spend money on education when you could have spent maybe 5% of that on education and make that 95% uh, in in return itself so just think of that so it's important whether it's this whether you're going to real estate whether you're going to other investments or anything learning something else you want to have the education down in the beginning that way you can implement those and keep learning and have the gains later on to show for it so the process has been simplified into rules and methodology uh, there's a lot of information out there so rather than going and searching uh, not knowing what you're looking for this has everything that you are looking for and what you will need and it's constantly updated just like the market so that you know you can follow up and stay up to date with the latest strategies uh, if i do find something new i'll put the put it in the course uh, if i you know learn a new system uh, new methods whatever it is it's constantly updated and i'm also doing sessions free for everyone so you don't have to have the course but we do have uh, live webinar sessions that i do with the course members themselves uh, just because they I uh, talk about some of the material from the course itself so that, that's why we do some of them uh, just for the course members and this is what the course offers so stock market education notice how I have that tab first because education is important and I want to put emphasis on that so completely understand the market itself how it works and then we jump into trading and investing and then some of my secrets to you that I've learned over the years and some of the methodology that I use every single day so everything I learned uh, whatever I'm using, I'll share in the course. So this is a chat room layout. Um, of course, you're already in the chat room right now, so you can kind of glance through this. But if you're watching it on YouTube and you're not part of the chat room, a link will be in the description to join, or you can join on the website. Uh, this is set up with the trading prep. Uh, notice how I said education is important, so we want to prepare ourselves. We'll have a daily watch list, charts and analysis. I'll do a weekly or a monthly uh, update on uh, video or kind of a recap with the chart on markets what's going on and then we go into trade ideas and then we have the vip access a uh, separate section for them uh, that's for lifetime members then we have commodities trading which is gold silver uh, etc i want to keep that separate because not everybody trades that and there's some people who specifically trade that so that's why i have that separate and then just feedback i like to see what people are thinking uh, about the chat room or the trades so if you have any suggestions and also kind of share your goals and dreams uh, for long term and the voice channel which is what you're in now so thanks for attending uh, i'll hand it over to paul uh, i know he has some things to say right now so i'll transfer that over to him but again this session will be recorded and uh, posted on youtube if you did miss it so you can go back to the slides and kind of read through the bullet points um, just give a second for Paul to take over and he will share his screen and I'll provide his input. And if you guys do have any questions while we're waiting for Paul to get set up, uh, you can go ahead and unmute your mic and ask me on there or you can type it in the voice chat room itself.